to the House. Kia ora. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Nikki Kay. I look at the outset of my speech um, on this piece of legislation. I do want to take a moment um, to acknowledge this incredible week for New Zealand and actually some female and women MPs in this House um, from both sides. The Honourable, um, the Honourable Heke Parata. Uh, I want to acknowledge Dame Jenny Shipley. I want to acknowledge um, the Honourable uh, Helen Clark. Um, we are very fortunate as a country to have had some outstanding female politicians, and this is a week to acknowledge them. And more so than ever in our education system. So I want to start with that theme. If we actually think about why this bill is incredibly important, we can take a moment to acknowledge that in our education system, there are huge numbers of incredible women delivering extraordinary things for young people. And, and probably none better than many of our teachers out there. And that is why this body is actually so important. It represents uh, more than 50,000 people who are in the workforce in, ter in terms of teachers, but also the many uh, principals out there, the support staff that work so hard every single week in our schools. So when National previously made these changes, they were not out of a whim. We, didn't, we were not interested in getting rid of democracy. Actually, we took on um, board very significant amounts of advice through the Workforce Advisory Report. It was on the back of really serious issues around sex offending and the way that our system might vet those people coming through into the profession. There was a huge amount of work done in that Workforce Advisory um, Group report, and then there were reports to ministers. It was years of work. And what it basically said is, when it comes to um, those hundreds of thousands of children in our schools, when it comes to the million parents out there that engage with our schools, when it comes to the th tens of thousands of teachers, we cannot afford to have a body making so many important decisions around registration, qualification, leadership that may uh, possibly be vested. We must have a skills and competency-based model. Now, we took into account at the time that we would um, have that as a main policy driver, that there would be independence, that there would be significant amounts of funding, uh, and that we would have cost efficiencies in the way that that entity was run. And with the stroke of a pen, and some legislation going through Parliament, it is our strong view on this side of the House, that we are seeing the reversal of major changes to this entity uh, that will lead to potentially not the best decisions in our education system. That's why we fought it. That's why we've opposed it, because we believe we are doing the right thing in trying to ensure that people understand that the best possible entity is one with a skills and competency-based model. And that's why we fought so hard. We do know, and we've heard throughout the course of this bill, these are some facts for you. This entity will cost uh, more than $700,000. That is 30,000 teacher aid hours. This entity will go from nine to 13 members. And again, we have not seen the arguments as to why that should occur. But more importantly, what is extraordinary is that this House has gone through months of select committee processes. We've been in this House debating this bill and we've had lectures from the other side about the importance of these uh, changes in terms of the me uh, membership to ensure the independence of the profession and to ensure that that profession has an adequate voice. And again, what happened last week? Minister Hipkins, as I said, as I warned members would happen, he has put <coughs> forward a bill in Parliament that is hypocritical, Madam Speaker. It is. The whole purpose of that bill is to say that the Minister can then direct this Council, which is supposed to be independent, on its functions. So what I would say to the tens of thousands of teachers out there and the principals that are listening, listen up. They, he may have argued that this entity was going to be independent and more of a voice for you, um, and somehow that that would lead to better educational outcomes. 
but you need to look at the piece of legislation coming. You cannot consider, or the members in this House cannot consider this piece of legislation without considering that legislation, which in my view, it not only means we're going to see greater cost, it means we're going to see a larger entity, but it means that the independence of the profession is severely compromised with that legislation that is coming on board. I think the other thing that I, you know, I do want to acknowledge in this House is exactly what we are talking about. If we are really serious about lifting our education system, and I've just been through about an hour of conversations about governance and the importance of and the difference that a, a great principal will make in terms of a school, then we have to get our leadership right. And again, I want to acknowledge all of the incredible principals out there that are working long hours. And as I say to many chief executives that I meet, when I meet some of our best principals in New Zealand, they would give them a run for their money. They are dealing with often very complex situations, major social issues, they're running major financial organisations, and again, they deserve, in my view, to have the best possible entity setting out the rules of the profession um, that is actually going to lift our education system. And we have not got that. We've now got, we're reversing to a model that will see, again, vested interests. And I want to acknowledge, I think it was Nicola Willis in this House, that made the very eloquent point that it's one thing to put up an entity and argue for a representative model, but the reality is the turnout is really low. I think it's 13 per cent in terms of um, recent elections. So we've not only got an entity that is shifting from being an ind independent in terms of the profession to one that will be controlled by the minister. We've got an entity that's going to cost more, but we've also got an entity that is being argued to be somehow more valid on the case of representation, but the turnout for some of these elections is around 13 per cent. So we on this side of the House feel very strongly that there is no greater cog in the wheel of our education system than probably something like this entity of the Education Council. And the rules that it sets around qualification, registration, the discussions of policy around what the requirements are for someone to come into the teaching profession, the way that we foster leadership in terms of principles will make one of the greatest differences in our education system. And we are sad. We are sad that we are moving to a system that was rejected by multiple reports. We are sad that we are moving to a system that will take away frontline funds from the teaching profession, $700,000 of that. We are sad that we are moving to a profession whereby it will be run by a larger entity. We are sad that we are moving to a profession uh, that is going to have a ministerial direction that will see the profession less independent. And ultimately, we are sad for those incredible teachers out there that deserve the best possible entity working on education policy. We are sad for those parents out there that deserve the best possible teachers in our classrooms. We are sad for those principals out there that are working long hours that want the best possible leadership policies, whether that is mentoring, whether that is the way that they deal with teachers um, in terms of their professional development. And I do want to finish with this. Not only did the last national government give this entity full independence, which is being taken away by this government in the next piece of legislation, the other thing that this government, the, the previous government did was it said we are prepared to put up $200 million worth of professional development fund and give that back to the profession. And at this point of time, we are unclear as to what exactly is happening with the professional development funding, and the message that I have for the tens of thousands of teachers out there is you do deserve the best. You deserve the best in terms of this entity. You deserve the ability to have greater say over, the, over your destiny. Order. 
I'm sorry to interrupt the member. I'm, I'm just the constant uh, barracking from this side of the house is not appropriate. So you deserve the best. You deserve to have an independent entity that has the heart of our education system at its forefront. It deserves to have the funding and the power and the independence to be able to do that. And we are sad in this House that we are seeing the reversal of major changes to an entity like this because children and parents and teachers deserve better. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Jenny Salesa. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I rise in strong support of the education.